Welcome to the Epidemic Watch podcast series. In this series, we discuss contemporary and emerging infectious diseases from across the world. I'm your host, Annie, and with me is Kumar, who has extensive insights into emerging infectious diseases. In today's episode, we delve into a deadly infectious disease that has recently made headlines, the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, or CCHF in short. For the starters, Kumar, could you explain what exactly is Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever? Thanks, Annie. Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, or CCHF, is a severe viral disease caused by the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever virus. The virus is primarily transmitted through insects or arthropods called ticks. The disease can also be spread through direct contact with the blood or infected body fluids of animals or livestock. So. How common is the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, and where is the disease typically found? CCHF is a disease primarily found in Africa, Asia, the Middle East, and recently reported from parts of Europe. The disease was first identified in Crimea, hence the name, in 1944. While the disease is relatively rare, it poses a significant threat due to its high mortality rate, which can reach up to 40%. So. What are the symptoms of CCHF, and how does the disease progress? CCHF, as I said earlier, comes with a high mortality. The incubation period for CCHF is typically between 3 and 7 days, and the initial symptoms include fever, headache, muscle aches, and dizziness. As the disease progresses, patients may experience severe symptoms such as vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and bleeding. In some cases, it can lead to liver failure and kidney damage. You said the disease comes with a large mortality. Given its severity, could you explain how CCHF is diagnosed and treated? Diagnosing CCHF can be very difficult and challenging since its early symptoms are similar to those of many other viral illnesses, what we call as hemorrhagic fevers. It is therefore not surprising that the disease comes with a significant delay in diagnosis. Laboratory tests are required to confirm the presence of the virus or detect antibodies. Treatment primarily involves supportive care, such as maintaining fluids, managing symptoms, and providing blood transfusions as and when required. How concerning is the spread of CCHF? And could you explain to the listeners whether there is a risk of a global outbreak? While CCHF is a serious disease, Its transmission is relatively limited and therefore the possibility of a global outbreak is very minimal. However, there have been sporadic outbreaks reported in different regions. Of significance is the emergence of CCHF in newer regions, especially in Europe. Many attribute this to global warming and climate change, which has enabled ticks to flourish in regions where it could not. In the past, the concern lies in the potential for the virus to spread rapidly if appropriate preventive measures are not in place. Strict infection control practices, public awareness campaigns, and surveillance are vital to prevent the disease from spreading and potentially causing a global outbreak. That's certainly important to keep in mind. Kumar, thank you for shedding light on Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Before we conclude, do you have any final thoughts or advice for our listeners? Absolutely. It's crucial to stay informed about infectious diseases like the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, especially if you are living in or traveling to endemic regions. Familiarize yourself with preventive measures, seek medical attention promptly if you experience symptoms after possible exposure, and remember that early diagnosis and supportive care are key to improving outcomes. Thank you for joining us today on the episode on Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in to this episode of Epidemic Watch. Stay safe and stay curious.